Welcome to Excel with Mark and today what we're going to be looking at is how we can take our data here from the different sheets that we have available and we're going to be answering some questions that you might get within a Excel interview or anything that you need to do within your job for Excel. So if this is something that interests you then let's follow along and see how we get along with these questions and we're going to start with the easiest and we're going to move all the way along to the hardest as we go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our first question here and we can see that we need to create a condition to find the revenue above 50,000 in green and below uh, the 50,000 in red. And what we can do for this is we can use the conditional format and, and starting out we're going to select the data that we have and we're going to go up here on the home tab to conditional format and, and we can see when we have conditional format in here that we get different options are uh, we want to highlight cell rules. The first one that we want to look at is we'll go for the greater. So we can see that we get the option here for greater than. And we can select that. And I'll just move my head out of the way. And we can see here that once we have done that, then it's going to give us the option. So cells that are greater than 56,000, but that's not what we want. We want to change this to cells greater than 50,000. And we know that we want them in green, so we could change that to green like so, and press OK. And from here now, you can see over on the data that everything that is highlighted is above that 50,000 mark. And again, if we want to change it, we could select the data that we have. We can go to the conditional format and select cell rules. But on this point, we don't have an equals to or less than, because we need to make sure that we include that 50,000 mark as well. So what we can do is just make up our own rule at this point. So now what we're going to do is use the format only cells that contain, and then we're going to say, oh, and once again, we can type in the 50,000, but now we need to just manually format this. So we can go into the format, select the fill, and we know that we want these to be red. So we'll just make them red, and we know that we want the font um, to be that as well so we can change that if you wanted to do anything with the font or colors or anything like that but we'll just leave that part for now and we can see that the font is just going to be black but the background of the cells will be red we can click ok and now we can see that we have that nicely highlighted so anything that's equal to 50,000 like we have up here in the cell d5 or anything that's less than that is now in red Moving on to question two now, what we can do is move on to the second sheet and we can see that we want employees with revenue over 50,000 should receive a bonus of 5%. So what we can start to do is break this down for our data. So uh, we'll put in the minimum there and we know that our minimum is going to be 50,000 for this and we want our bonus to come in at the 5% mark. So uh, what we can do is just change the formatting of this uh, cell that we have here and we're just going to make this percentage up here so once we put this in now we can see that we have a bonus of five percent up here and we know that our minimum needs to be fifty thousand and the reason why i've put these at the side here is so that we can make these interchangeable if anything changes within time so what we can do is type in uh, bonus all right so and we can see that the has already moved over the format and on what we need to do. But we can use a simple if statement for this one. So we can press the equals and go if and open the parentheses there. And we first of all need to look at our logical test. And we know that this cell here is what we want to work out first. So we want to know if this cell here is greater than this cell over here that we've just entered in. Um, with our values and again because we're actually putting in the cell value we can make this interchangeable but what we want to do at this point is just lock this in now so we want to lock this in now just to make sure that that don't move so we can press the f4 key and pressing the f4 key there we can see that it puts these dollar signs before the column and before the row there so we know that when we drag this down because we don't want to be manually inputting this every time that when we drag it down, this is going to stay exactly on this cell for us and it's not going to move down like it would do for the rest of it. So then what we need to be looking at is the true option. So we know that this is the logical test. So if that is above that, then what do we do if it's true? So we want that value 
and we're going to take that value and we're going to times it by what our bonus is here. So that's great and that will work for the true. And if this is now false, what do we want to do for that one? So we'll just leave that blank because we don't want to be giving bonuses out. We don't want to overcomplicate the data at any point. So we can leave that blank, close the parentheses, and now we can just press enter. But what I'm going to do, just quickly looking at that there, is I can go back into this really quickly and just press the F4 there because I want to lock in that cell as well there just before we drag this down. So we can just get this now and then double click it down and we can see that that now has calculated our bonus for each of these people as they've worked down and we can see how much of an extra bonus they should be getting within their wage. So that's question two complete now. And now we're gonna move up another scale and we're gonna go into the intermediate things now. And what it's asking us to do at this point is separate the department and region column into two separate columns in the yellow area. And I'll just make this bit yellow here so we can see which area I'm referring to. And we can see here that we have the department at the front, then an underscore, and then we have the region underneath. And if you are on uh, Microsoft 365, you should have the text split option. So if we go down and select text split there, by pressing the tab, we can see that we have the text that we want to first of all look at. And we know that that's gonna be cell C6. And then next of all, we have the delimiter. So what is it that we want to delimiter it by? And we want that to be the underscore, which we can see there, and then close parentheses. We can then press the enter, and now we can see that this has worked in the sense that it's put the department at the front, and we have the region in the second column there as we work down, and it's separated that nicely for us. If you don't have the Excel 365 version and you want to do this yourself, then what we can do is go up to the data tab here, we can then select the data that we've got. We can then go to the text columns and we can see that this is gonna go through a similar process. So we want the delimiter and where do we want this delimited by? So we can select other at this point and we can pop in an underscore. We don't have any tabs, okay? And then we want next. The destination is where do we want this to be? So we can pop it here and press enter at that point. And then once we've done, we can then click finish. And because we've just entered the text before, that's why we had data, but we can see now that that's just moved it over for us and input the data in the right positions for us. And again, it's worked exactly the same as it did before. So we separated the department and we've also separated the region. So the fourth question that we're gonna look at now is on the sheet here. And we can see that we've got a little bit of a slightly bigger part of data here and it's asking us to use a pivot table to find the total revenue by product and the average product uh, average profit by a product sorry so to do this then we're obviously going to be working within pivot tables and what we can do is just click within our data here and we're going to click insert and we want to insert a pivot table at this point so we can see that we've got our pivot range or our table range here and it's highlighted all of the data for us. And just to make this easier, we're just gonna click within existing worksheet and we'll just click on the side here just so it keeps it all within one sheet. And we can click okay. Uh, I'll just move my head over here just so we're out of the way. And then what it's done is it's brought up all of our titles for our different columns within this. So we know that we're working within product to start out with. So we want all of our products to be down here. And we can just take the products and put them into rows. And by putting them into rows, then it's going to break down, get rid of any duplicates or anything like that, and just give us all of our different products that we need. We then need to find the total revenue of a product. So we then need to drag the revenue down as a value. And, we can, and then it's asking us for the average profit of a particular product. So again, we can click, drag the profit and we can put that underneath there and it's just going to add in that extra column for us. But the problem that we've got here is we can see that we have the sum of product here, but it's not the sum of products it's one in, it's one in the average product. So we can just go down and click onto the side here and you can see that you get getting value settings here and we can click into it. And once you've done that, 
you can click onto the average, click OK, and there it's going to change it over to the average for you. And within this, then, you have the opportunity to jazz this up a little bit, if anything you want, or change this in terms of if you wanted to change this to currencies and stuff. Um, if you want to just make that a little bit more how it should be in terms of, you know, if it's a price or anything like that. And that's how you can make your pivot table stand out a little bit more with that. And obviously, you have the options to move things around a lot easier as it's a pivot table. But that should just work nice and easily for you. So we're just going to move on to the question five now that we could have over here. And what we're getting asked for now is we want to use two different formulas to find the revenue for Sarah. So the first one that we could potentially use at this point is the X lookup function. So we could press equals and go for the X lookup. And it's asking us what the lookup value is, first of all. So we know that we're looking for Sarah and then the lookup array. So what is it or where would we find Sarah? We know that we'll find her within the column here of B5 to B15. And then where would we find Sarah's revenue? So we know that we would find that down here within column D. So we can then close this and put the close parentheses, press enter. And now we have that 48,500, which we know works out right for Sarah, as we can see there. And now we need to work on the second formula of how we would return this. For this second one, we're going to use the index match functions put together. So we'll start out with the index and we can see that first of all, we need the array. So we're just going to select all of these revenues down here and then we can press the comma. And now we're going to input the match function. So we can see that we have the match there. We can press the tab to open it up. And we're looking for the lookup value now. So we know that our lookup value is going to be Sarah again. And then we can press the comma there. And where we're going to find Sarah within this point. So we know that we're going to find Sarah within this B column here. Okay. And we want all the exact matches for Sarah. We don't want it to be greater than or less than. So we need that to be zero. And now what we can do is close the parentheses for the match. And then press enter. And again, we're getting the exact same result of 48,500. Okay, and that is how we can use two different formulas to get to the same exact results. So hopefully you found this useful. And if you did, then don't forget to leave it a like. If you have any more things that you would like to do within Excel questions or interview questions, then don't forget to leave a like. And have a look below for further information of the Excel community that we're currently building. And if you've got any questions, then as always, but don't get to see you in the next one when we get to one, so.